Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're heading for Hungary to take a look at the Hungaro Ring in F122. First we'll explain how you should drive this circuit in our track guide, then we're diving somewhat deeper and give you some in-depth tips on how to master this track completely using the Track Titan analysis. And consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any future uploads. Starting the lap, we keep the minimum speed around the apex high, so we can build up as much speed on the straight. Using all the track space here, but watch out that you don't get on the green curbing here, because it will invalidate your lap. We use DRS as early as possible to get down the straight, carrying as much speed as possible. For turn 1, we want to break right between the 150 meter board and shift down the second gear to get the car turning, but quickly back up the third gear to get you through the corner without losing too much traction. We use a little bit of apex curbing here and run out wide, but we immediately get back to the right hand side to set us up for turn two. We dab on the brakes right on the 50 meter board and turn into this long left hander, shifting down the third and accelerating once we pass the apex, gradually getting back on the throttle to combat any oversteer. Again, we run out wide and bring the car back to the middle of the track to give us enough space to get us flat out through turn three. We can use some apex curb here to give us the best line through the corner so we can carry as much speed down this short straight as possible. When we come to turn 4 we want to stay off of the outside curb on the right as it is lifted pretty high and can easily unsettle your car. We dab the brakes quickly and flick the car into the corner shifting down to 6th, getting back on the throttle early trying to maintain as much speed as possible until turn 5. Braking just before we pass the steward shed on the side of the track. We steer deep into the corner, shift down the fourth to maintain our grip and letting the car coast until we can gradually get back on the power after we pass the midway point of this long right hander. We go wide again and stay on the left side to set ourselves up for the upcoming chicane. Braking hard in a straight line when the red and white curbing begins, shifting down the third gear again, we turn into the chicane and we can take lots of apex curbing here but make sure to avoid the sausage curbs as they will guarantee a ruined run. Short shifting up the fourth gear to avoid wheel spin. You can use the sausages if you're looking for every last tenth. And then using all the track space on exit. Running over the outside curbing here, we dab on the brake shortly after the 50 meter mark and steer the car into turn eight. Shifting down to fourth, we clip the apex curb a little bit, not too much to avoid spinning, sticking to the left to set us up for a good entry into turn nine. Shifting up the fifth gear, we take a wide line into turn nine, brushing past the inside curb and getting on the power early for a fast exit. Also using as much track space on exit as the game allows and bringing the car back to the middle of the road for a smooth run through turn 10. This corner is easily done flat out and we want to hug the left side for a good run into turn 11. Letting go of the gas briefly, we turn into this corner and you really want to get a feel for when you can get back on the power again because it's easy to overshoot this corner on accident. Flying down this straight, we want to brake as hard as possible just before the curb begins. We want to shift down the third gear, short shifting up the fourth using a lot of apex curb to make sure we have enough traction and we want to get back on the right hand side as fast as possible to set us up for a good turn 13. Braking just after we pass under the ads banner, we take a smooth sweeping line to carry as much minimum speed as we can. Looking for a late apex, we aim for the white line as hitting the curb here could kill you. We run out wide using all the track space available, short shifting to improve traction and we bring the car back to the left side to set us up for the widest line into the final corner. Turning in at the marshal's post, short shifting to fifth so we can be on the power very early on. We want to avoid the inside curb and use all the exit curbing when we get back onto the straight. Now let's dive a little deeper and discuss some aspects of the Hungaro Ring which make it a unique and quite tricky track. It's often compared to a karting track as there are very few straights and there's quite an amount of bends. Of the 14 turns there's 5 which are almost or more than 180 degrees. These long turns demand respect and patience on the throttle. If you get on the power too much or too early you can easily spin yourself around but if you're too hesitant, you'll lose a lot of time. 
it's a tricky balancing act getting through these corners in the fastest manner. So let's check them out in the Track Titan analysis where we can compare what happens when you're too hesitant and what it looks like when you're doing it right. Let's take a look at T13. We can see the fast lap in blue and the slower one in orange. The first thing we note in the speed chart is that the faster lap exits the previous section with a lot more speed and keeps more minimum speed throughout this whole corner. When we look at the throttle inputs, we see that the faster driver is being patient and gradual on the throttle, which helps with maintaining grip through these long corners. The slower driver is actually earlier on the throttle, but they have to correct themselves or risk going wide, losing even more speed on exit. Turn 5 is a little less tight, but the same rules apply here as well. Carrying the most amount of minimum speed throughout the corner and knowing when and how to apply throttle is critical. In the speed chart we see the same story again. The slower driver has a lot less minimum speed than the faster driver. And when we compare when they get back on the power, we see the slow drivers making the same mistake again. Getting on the power just a tad too early and having to correct themselves losing yet more valuable time on exit. So what can we learn from these track titan analyses? Well, the Hungaro Ring's long and slow bends require a significant amount of precision and know-how to extract every last tenth out of them. If you're too harsh on the brakes, you'll lose minimum speed throughout the whole bend. If you're too early on the gas, you'll need to correct yourself if you don't spin, all costing a lot of time, especially if you're doing them all wrong. So keep up your minimum speed, be wary of your grip, and know when you can get back on the power for a great exit. Let's wrap up by going over the key points you need to keep in mind to be successful in the Hungarian GP. The curbs on this track can be quite tricky. Some are raised quite high and others are as flat as a pancake. Be sure to know the difference and to not find yourself on one of them sausages. This circuit also has many long winding corners in which you need to keep your minimum speed up, control the throttle to maintain your speed and not overdo it, otherwise it will cause you to lose time or spin out. The Hungaro Ring is definitely one of the more technical tracks, so make sure you get enough practice in before you find yourself in the middle of a crash compilation. We hope you've learned something today. Check out the Track Titan platform in the description down below and we hope to see you in the next one.